For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God, the foundation, the source of our being, the creator, not evolution, the creator, God, made man in his own image, body, soul, and spirit. The body we can see, the soul and the spirit, the spirit of our breath, in and out, exhaling, inhaling. But man has a soul, an unseen part of him that lives for all eternity. And yet our body too will have eternity. A body, a new body by Jesus Christ, a body likened unto a worm according to the scriptures in hell. There is an afterlife. It is a heaven or it's a hell. There's no other place. There's no soul sleep according to the Bible. And the only access that you have to heaven, to God the Father, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh down to the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said. You cannot come to God with religion. You cannot come to God that I'm a good person. For the Bible says there is none good. There is none righteous. No, not one. The only righteousness of God that we can have is through Jesus Christ, through the gospel that Jesus Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. A body and soul that we have and in reality. There's really no death. Now death for this body that you put inside of a casket, inside of a hole. Okay. But what about your soul? What about that eternal part of you? God has given us eternal soul, and because man fell by rebelling against the word of God, we came into sin. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Death happens every day. How many people today woke up in eternity? And yet the Bible says many will go through the broad way, and yet few will go through the straight gate. Many people entered into a place called hell this morning, and they will never come out. Few people have woke up and gone to be with the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Bible says rejoice and glorify and praise in the Savior, who suffered and died on that cross. You have eternal soul, the Bible says that there is and eternal life, there is life after death. And as far as God says to his word, he doesn't care what you think. He doesn't care what you believe. He cares that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That gospel is not prosperity. That gospel is not just say this prayer. That gospel is you come to Jesus Christ, the sinner that you are. You've got to come to Jesus as a sinner, repentant, sorry of your sin. What's the problem with most of these religions out there? They're, okay, they're not sorry for what they've done. They're not sorry for what they do. True repentance is when you turn. This police officer has seen many people, oh, officer, I'm not guilty, I'm not guilty, please don't arrest me. And yet the court has found those people guilty. And to receive a pardon, you must be guilty. No one who is not guilty cannot receive a pardon. And the pardon of God is through Jesus Christ through faith and belief that you are the sinner. For the wages of sin is death. Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. What must 
I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Eternal life is, is available by God through Jesus Christ. And yet God has given man the ability to say, yes, I want, I want Jesus, or no, I'll take any other way. God doesn't want robot salvation. He wants you to come as you are to Jesus Christ and believe. <laughs> and with that message, God says, hey, come. Come forth. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou be saved. He said, what makes you and your Jesus better than my church? What makes you better than my Baptist faith, the belief in the Bible. The surety that Jesus said, thus saith the Lord, that God has said, thus saith the Lord. And God, Isaiah chapter 1, as I turn there, some people think God's cruel. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. You see, God wants you to be saved. And the love of God is Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. What is the love of God? It's Jesus Christ. That love brought forth a shed abroad upon Calvary's cross. When Jesus Christ suffered and died, Isaiah 53, he did it because of your iniquities. He did it because of your sins. Jesus Christ was sinless. And yet we are vile. The Bible describes us as filthy rags as far as our righteousness. And I'm not going to tell you what those filthy rags are. But according to the scriptures, when God looks at us without Jesus Christ, you're vile, you're wicked, you're unclean. You are not going to enter into God's holy presence of who you are and what you are and what you believe outside Jesus Christ. Now, when you come to Jesus Christ, say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know what to understand. But the Bible says I must believe on you. I must tell you about my sins. I must confess them. I must be sorry for my sins. And he's able to save your soul. There is a book of entrance into heaven called the Lamb's Book of Life. And if your name is not in that book, you will be going into the lake of fire that burns forever. And yet, if you were to have your name written in that book, now I'm going to assume something. Let me say I'm going to assume that the blood of Jesus Christ is, is written in that book, your name, by the blood of Jesus. Now, I don't know if it's actually the book. I don't know what the ink is. But I, I would assume that it would be the blood of Jesus. And I may be wrong. But there's one thing I do know about the Bible. It says if your name is not in that book, you will not go to heaven. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Well, uh, you know, I, I got religion. Religion can't do nothing. Religion is man-made by Satan. Jesus Christ is God-approved. The only approval of God is Jesus Christ. That's it. You see, this message is so important that we stand here, and a lot of your vendors are not here today, and yet we are here with the gospel because, you know what? You may face death this afternoon. You may face death this morning. You may face death tonight. I don't want you to wake up in hell. You may think that we are a problem to you. You may think that we're an annoyance to you. You may think we are a hindrance to your business. But when you wake up in eternity, you're going to say, I wish I had listened, or I thank God I listened to you, brother. And then once you realize where you wake up in eternity, you cannot, you cannot go back, you cannot change your destination. Now, as unsaved people, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. If 
if I'm talking to a Christian, okay, and I've seen, I've heard many of you say, Christian, oh, uh, that's not what Jesus would do. You're turning the people away, but you don't understand what we're doing is found in the pages of the Bible, especially in the book of Acts. Paul preached on Mars Hill. Jesus preached from a mountain. Jesus preached from a boat. And as a Christian, in order to receive rewards from God, you must, well, no, it's not a must for a Christian. You should preach the gospel. You should tell others about Jesus Christ. There will be rewards for those that are saved. But as far as the way to heaven, it is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. That's it. God has one way, and he says, go and preach that one way. Oh, I don't hear that in my church, and that's the problem with your church. Your church is not preaching the gospel. Your church is not living by God's standards of the Bible, and they probably don't have the King James Bible. I'm going to go further to say that there's one Bible. There's one God, one Spirit. One Savior. Got to be one book. And this book, the King James Bible says, you must be born again because you are born into sin. When your mama gave birth to you, she gave birth to a little sinner. And you grew up to be a bigger sinner. You see, the idea is, Isn't it cute? He stole cookies. Oh, look at little Junior. He's drinking the beer like his dad. Oh, did you just hear what little Junior said? No, you're violating the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not lie. You are a sinner. You're a sinner from the crib. You'll sit there whining and crying, and you don't need nothing. You just want the attention from your parents. You were born into sin because you had no teeth, no hair, and you're crying into a God-forsaking world ruled by Satan. And troubles and problems and problems saved or lost. You were born to die. And between your birth and your death, you ought to, must be born again to go to heaven. When they put that date on your tombstone, year, and they put that date you died, year, that dash better include being born again. You have been better be born twice than be born once. Twice born, you go to heaven. Once born, you go to hell. That simple. It's a simple message. It's the same message. One of your vendors said last week, oh, you say the same thing every 15 minutes. Amen. Well, thank God. Amen. You've got to realize it has been the same message. It is the same message. It does not change like your commercials. One week, it's a lizard. Next week, it's a football player. Then the week after that, it's this broad. Then it's whatever it is. And then whatever it is, but forever salvation is wrought upon Jesus Christ for over 2,000 years. And whatever Christ will be for 2,000 years more, if he tarries. And get this. It's a free gift. Gift. Free. You don't ever pay for a gift. When I was a little boy, my mom would have to buy her own gifts. But this gift is totally free from God. And this gift is not only from God, Jehovah Witnesses, it is God. Acts 20:28 20, says that it is God's blood. In order to be saved, you've got to have blood. I'm sorry, water will not do it, it'll just get you wet. Being in a congregation of a church will make you a congregationalist. I'm not talking about the religious, it'll make you a congregation in a church. It'll make you whatever denomination, even if it's not a denomination.
denomination. Where does a non-denominational church go? Oh, we're just pulling around. Ooh. I'm sorry, but there's no Baptist heaven. There's no Catholic heaven. The popes keep changing it. They keep closing it and opening it and closing it and opening it. There are no virgins waiting for you. Okay? That's a lie out of hell. Mr. Jehovah Witness, 144,001. What's the problem? 1914, Jesus Christ showed up. Really? Mary. Mary says in the Bible, the last recorded of Mary, her words were in John chapter 4. What's over my son said? Do it. What's the Bible say? The Bible says, Acts 16, 30, 31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Let's see if my finger is still in Isaiah. Yeah, it is. Come now, God speaking. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. You've got a terminal condition called sin. Oh, I never had cancer. Well, thank God you never had cancer. But you got something that's going to kill you. You've got a condition in your body that you were born with called sin. You are going to die. And I know the reason why you're going to die. You may have a heart attack, you may have a stroke, you may get hit by a car, more likely in Florida. You may eat bad fruit, bad meat. You just may go to sleep and close your eyes, but I know why you're going to die according to the Bible. The wages of sin is death. Not a sinner? Let's give it time. Because when you die, you'll prove you're a sinner, and then you have done nothing with your sins, and you'll burn in a lake of fire forever. Well, preacher, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there's no God. And the Bible says, wait one day, atheist, prepare to meet thy God. Micah. You see, God has the answer for your troubles and your problems. It's the scripture. Your answer to eternal life is Jesus Christ. Now let me tell you something right now off the bat. Salvation will not give you a great life. Salvation may not heal that cancer. Salvation may not make your husband a better husband. But it will put your name in the Lamb's book of life that when you do take your last breath, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Amen. Now, salvation through Jesus Christ may give you a better life. May. I'm not going to promise it. But I do know what it will give you on this earth. It will give you fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You can go through your troubles with the peace of God by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. By obeying what he tells you to do after salvation. It won't stop. It may stop. It won't stop. It may stop. I can't answer that. But through the fruit of the Spirit, it can be better. I know. I have a testimony of the Holy Spirit working in the troubles and problems of my life. first thing you need to do is you need to deal with your sin condition. Let's forget the big sins, okay? Let's forget about adultery and murder and that. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever told a lie? If you say no, you just told a lie. Okay? We 
you can go ask your mother and your parents. We'll find out you did tell a lie one time in your life. You know that lie concentrates you to go to hell? One lie. Do you realize when you tell that person you love them and you don't know God, you don't know what love is. You are lying to that person when you say, I love you in the absence of God. Oh, I just love you, but I don't know God. You're a liar. Because God is love. Everybody knows that passage, but they forget the fact is, if you're not known of God, you don't know what love is. So when you say, without knowing God in Jesus Christ, I love you, you're lying. And I'll tell you what love is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Your love may be, hey, baby, I just want you. But God's love is, you're going to die, you're going to hell, I'm going to send my Son that you may have eternal life. And God profits nothing from mankind. God did not get one point on April 21st when I got saved. He just got himself a saved sinner. That's what he got. Matter of fact, the day I got saved, he got one more problem. A sinner. We're all sinners. But you must bring those sins to Jesus Christ, repentant, and want to get right with God, that fellowship with Jesus Christ. You can't come to God and enjoy your sin. That's not right. That's like walk up to this police officer. Hey, cop, I love smoking dope. What are you arresting me for? And then you're going to be held off before the court, and the, the, the police officer is going to say, he smoked it right in front of me, and he's going to be charged. Well, what's wrong? You aren't sorry. The Bible speaks about two sorrowfulness. I'm sorry because I was caught. Boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. And then there's another sorry to godly sorrow, repentant sorrow, that I want to get right with the God that made me. I want to get right by Jesus Christ. I want to come to God on his terms. I want to do it God's way, and that is to repent of your sins and do right. Come now and let us reason together. God says, come. God says, step out. He ain't going to come to you. He ain't going to come to you, especially if you're with someone else, because that someone else may drive you away. I've seen it. I have seen people convicted, ready to be dealt with, and then their friend shows up. But rest assured, you are a sinner, and you're going to face God. Prepare to meet that God one day. That's going to happen. That is Bible prophecy. Bible prophecy is without Jesus Christ, you will burn in the lake of fire for all eternity. That's worse than hell. The Bible also says to get out of hell, have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. How's that? How about if you come to God God's way to get right and get right right by God's way? As life insurance. Couldn't think of it. Jesus Christ offers death insurance. You realize with life insurance, your family prospers when you die. Woo! Million dollar policy. All right. Glad he's dead. But with death insurance... You prosper upon your death to go into eternal heaven, eternal glory, with the one that suffered and died for you, according to the scriptures, and was buried and arose again, according to the scriptures. And the premium has been paid by the blood of God, Acts 20, 28. You cannot wish this off. You cannot religion this off. You cannot hope that this is off. You've got to believe with your heart that Jesus is able to
to cleanse your soul that you may have eternal life. It's that simple. It's the same message every 15 minutes. And do you realize in 15 minutes how many people have fell off in eternity? All around this world. Someone is dying right now as I'm speaking. And many, according to the scriptures, many are going to die and enter into hell. Don't be of the many. Be the few. And not for the Marines, be the few that believe on Jesus that when you die, absent from the body and present with the Lord. There's none righteous. No, not one. You can't stand, you may stand as me and say, well, I'm a good person. But not in the eyes of God. How are you going to stand before God that's holy, he's never done anything wrong a day of his life, and he's lived for eternity? And how are you going to face God to say, oh, I'm better than you? Oh. I believe Americans will have that nerve. And yet, when you approach God, and you approach God by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the merit of the gospel, that Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, God says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou. How's that? I find a place here. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off. And he cried, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water that I may cool my tongue, for I am in tormented in this flame. Have you ever had a first degree burn? Have you ever touched that oven rack and you feel the sting of that intense heat burning through your body? That's just your finger. Maybe your arm. Ah, oh, it hurts. Burning hurts. But when you are burning from head to toe, outside and inside, and there is no relief, there is no medication, and the Bible describes it as torment, You're going to wish you had listened to the preacher in the gospel of the Bible. But you can't do anything. Now, I don't know what the memory of hell is going to be like. And thank God I ain't going. But I would hate to have the memory, and again, I'm speculating today, that if you were to remember this message in hell about Jesus saves, and remember all the fruits and the vegetables, and not able ever to get them. Now, the man in hell, let's see what his memory is. For I have five brethren that he may testify. He remembers his family. He remembers that water can cool him. What if you were to remember at a farmer's market you heard the gospel and you rejected it? Oh, you'd be called, let me just have one little bite of watermelon. You know what? No more mercy. I've been saying that least. Nothing, no grace. Me, no, but speaking the truth. Yes. I, you know. Thank you for your support. Yeah, I've been saying that least for a few minutes. 
Your boy, see you over there too. He said the same thing. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have you ever had anything in your life where you say, oh, I wish I could go back and do it, or not do it? I've had plenty of those experiences. And, you know, you, you live on, you, you suffer, and you live your life, and, you know, it doesn't really do any great damage to your life. But if you're not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved, your decision... There is no time in hell. There's no getting out of hell. There's no way, there's no door, there is no avenue to get out. You stay in the lake of fire for all eternity because you choose to reject God's way. I am the way, the truth, the life, Jesus said. No man comes out to the Father but by me. That's not me speaking, that's Jesus speaking. You're going to want to get out, and you can't. Ever. And ever. And if you're to believe on Jesus, you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to glory. You're not ever one going to get out, and you're going to enjoy it for all eternity. I like this man with his barbecue because it's a great example. Everyone line up to jump in his barbecue. Put yourself on his burning coal. Oh, I want to do that. Set yourself a fire. Oh, no. And yet you will disregard God's message to be burning in an eternal fire that lasts forever and you won't care. You will be told to go jump in the lake of fire, and I'm telling you how not to. I am handing you a lifesaver to not go to that lake. And a lifesaver is used before you go to the lake, before you even jump in, that lifesaver will pull you out of that lake for all eternity. Talk about a lifesaver. And Jesus Christ is the lifeline. And Jesus Christ is the anchor. Now imagine if I were to tell you, take a lifeline and tie an anchor to it. You look at me and boy, you are crazy. And yet that's Jesus Christ. Death is coming. The wages of sin is death. Now let me ask, are you willing to gamble what the Bible says? Well, you don't care what the Bible says. I understand that. But let me ask you a question. What if the Bible is correct and you're wrong? Will you give me that possibility? Will you even try to think about the fact is that what if the Bible's correct? And if the Bible is correct, then there's a hell. And if the Bible's correct, you're going there. And if the Bible's correct, you're not coming out. And if the Bible's correct, you'll get tormented forever. And if the Bible's correct, you don't have to go. And if the Bible's correct, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But you're going to base your eternal life on, ah, it's written by man, it's not God's word, I don't care, I don't believe in it, that's not it. Will you shut up already? Will you just get on? Will you just shut up about God? I don't want to hear it. Are you willing to take that gamble? i got good news for you. And this good news is not the gospel. If you don't want to hear the word of God, you don't want to hear preaching, you will not hear it in hell. You will not find...
find a Bible, you will not find a Bible breathing preacher in hell. You will not find Jesus Christ in hell. You will not find God in hell. But you will also find no relief. You'll find no mercy and no grace in hell. And you will find no alcoholic beverages in hell either. Your friends will want nothing to do with you in hell. They're too busy being tormented as you're being tormented. And if you go to hell, you won't see me no more. You'll not see my family no more. Well, we'll be in glory celebrating with God, Jesus Christ, the Son. And you may say, well, I've got my way. And Jesus will say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. But Lord, I went to church. Lord, I gave money. Lord, I gave to the telephone. Lord, I'm a good person. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you will be the words of Jesus Christ. You know what Jesus will tell you what you think and what you believe? I can tell you what Jesus will tell you and whatever you want to do outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus will tell you, take that and go to hell with it. You know, man may say, go to hell, and they do. But you don't want Jesus to tell you to go to hell. You want Jesus to welcome you. And many that go the broad way, Paul says that there's another Jesus. Some of you do not have the right biblical Jesus. And don't get me going on that one. Paul says there's another gospel. Paul says there's another spirit. And if you have another gospel, another Jesus, another spirit, you're not saved. Well, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Man, you torment us every week with that Bible. So that you will not be tormented in hell. <laughs> or at least prepare you to where you're going. Alright, I torment you to, to get saved and do right. Then have you be tormented for all eternity. Now brother, you ride that bike like that, you need to get saved. There is no relief in hell. Mercy and grace comes by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. In order to get to God, you've got to come by Jesus Christ in the Gospel. That He died for your sins according to the Scriptures. Eating and drinking Jesus is not according to the Scriptures. And he was buried. And he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. You will face death one day. And after death is eternal life. Greatness and wonderfulness and mercy and grace is by Jesus Christ. Torment and agony is by going to hell without Jesus Christ. 